Sony's PlayStation 2 might be my favorite console of all time. It has such amazing games, it had awesome marketing, the console itself looks awesome, it had networking support, it had hard drive support, it had USB ports and a Firewire port, which I don't think anything ever actually used. It was just such a good system with over or nearly 4,000 total games, if you include the Japanese exclusives. It's just so good. And I put a video up on my main channel, Epos Fox, uh, that is a big deep dive into the PS2 emulator, PCSX2, which just is hitting its 20th anniversary. It's been in development for 20 years, and they have made some major strides with it. Talk about that over there, but if you're curious, you know, what kind of games you should be playing for it, we're covering that here with the help of some of my gaming creator friends. BBK Dragoon here, and one of my all-time favorite PlayStation 2 games is Gran Turismo 4. And I was obsessed with GT3 and 4 as a kid. These games still hold up today. Between stellar audio quality and super immersive visuals, I really feel like I'm driving at a high quality arcade. The experience is kind of overwhelming, all while not having to leave my house or the couch. The physics engine, it blows me away how good of a racer it is. People are still playing this thing today. Polyphonic knocked it out of the park with these racing games, and anybody trying PlayStation 2 needs to give them a go. Thank you for having me, my man. If I had to pick the best PS2 games, the must plays, it's very difficult because the PlayStation 2 has an absolutely vast library of games that you should definitely play. But if I had to pick two games, I'd have to go with Tenchu Wrath of Heavens and Fatal Frame. Tenchu Wrath of Heavens is a stealth action game, and if you know me at any chance, you know that I'm a huge fan of the stealth action titles. Now, of course, a lot of people might know uh, Metal Gear Solid, they might know Splinter Cell, they might even consider Siphon Filter to be a bit of a stealth action game, but Tenchu is a long-running franchise, getting some mad stealth kills, and Tenchu 3 is one of the first iterations on the PlayStation 2 for the franchise, and beyond having some pretty good graphics that are actually holding up to this day, 60 frames per second, it has a vast library of levels, tons of single player content even multiplayer and it's got sort of a hitman vibe where you're actually you know sort of planning out your sort of hit you actually have to like pick exactly what you're bringing with you to the actual battlefield to the actual field and you have to sneak around basically using zip lines various tools to get that sort of height advantage the vertical advantage finding multiple entry points and sneaking through tons of guards methodically and using a lot of stealth and a lot of patience to succeed and if you do get caught there's a combat system that's you know fairly good i would say the the game has aged well in terms of mechanics and even controls, but you're going to feel a little bit archaic because, hey, it is the PlayStation 2, and this is one of the earlier PlayStation 2 games as well. But if you give it a chance, you'll find out that this is a stealth action franchise that's frankly been unfortunately left a little dormant. And being one of the peaks for the Tenchu franchise, I would absolutely recommend if any of you have a stealth action fixation, definitely hit this game up. Now, Fatal Frame, if you're a fan of survival horror, you might know of titles like Resident Evil and Silent Hill, but Fatal Frame is a very long-running franchise, and one of its first outings was on the PlayStation 2, Fatal Frame 1 being specific, way back in the early 2000s. Now, Fatal Frame has some pretty amazing graphics, again, even holds up pretty well to this day and age, especially if you emulate it and up the resolution even higher. It's got pretty cool lighting effects, and the best gimmick is, of course, it's kind of like a Luigi's Mansion. You have a spirit camera where you can aim around and take photos of various ghosts haunting you around Himuro Manor. Now, of course, this game is centered around the structure of several days. It's not going to take you terribly long, and as far as difficulty is considered, I think most of anybody can really get past this game. It's your standard survival horror fare, but I think it does pretty well in terms of atmospheric horror. And I remember back in the day when I played this on the demo disc, I was absolutely piss scared. But I would recommend for anybody who's a survival horror fan to definitely hit up Fatal Frame. And if you like the first game, which I'm gonna bet that you will, you'd be absolutely pleased to know that there's several games in front of Fatal Frame 2 being one of my favorites. And this franchise has made it all the way up to even the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5 in terms of a re-release of a Wii U title. I hope Fatal Frame gets more recognition because this is definitely a franchise that can go even further with a much higher budget budget, and uh, especially with how the world is inter interested in survival horror, I wouldn't be opposed to getting more of this game. But if it comes to one of the must-play titles, I definitely recommend Fatal Frame as well. It's just one of those franchises that does survival horror so well. There's tons of combat, there's tons of enemy types, and there's also different styles of like film that you can use to get a better shot on some of these creatures. Like, it's absolutely a game that I would recommend you hit up if you're a fan of the survival horror stuff. It's not too, too scary. I mean, it's a survival horror game with ghosts, so definitely hit it up if you want to, for sure. It's one of those must-plays that I would recommend on the PlayStation 2, and that's not even getting into the rest of the franchise. Thank you, my man, for having me, and I uh, hope you all have a good one. 
Hi, I'm McPatches 3D. I'm a retro collector and a retro streamer. For my suggestion for a PS2 game that is like a, on the must play list, I'm choosing Shadow Hearts. It's a turn-based JRPG that is set in like 1914 roughly in our real world long time ago it's a sequel to a playstation 1 game called kodelka but it's loosely connected so you don't really have to have played that first it's turn-based but it's similar to legend of dragoon where you have like an interactive combat and it actually had two sequels so we have shadow hearts one and you can tell i've had this for a long time by the hastings sticker and then we got shadow hearts covenant which is a direct sequel to it, picks up, follows the same main character. And then I don't have the actual case for it, but I have Shadow Hearts 3 from the New World. They're an underrated series. They kind of slipped away. It was a Midway game released in early 2000s, like 2001, I believe. And uh, I recently played it this last year, back to back one and two. The game itself, you have a pretty awesome cast. The main character, Yuri, he transforms into various like demons and you, you equip them. Um, Alucard, I don't remember his actual name, but he is a vampire that you re recruit. And Maya down there, she is the person, uh, a female or a lady that, uh, Yuri meets on a train and rescues. And then we also have, um, I forgot his actual name, Zazu. <laughs> He's like a monk. Uh, we have, so, uh, we named her Galena. She's a spy. And then Howley, I think that might actually be his real name. I don't remember for sure, but he's this orphan kid that you meet and he fights with a uh, slingshot. She has guns and like, different gadgets that she gets for her abilities. And he's a spellcaster. So he's more offensive based spellcaster. She is, uh, Maya is like a healer, but she does have some offensive magic. And then these are our two most like physical. It's kind of a horror environment set between uh, China and Europe. You go to all these real life locations and through the series you interact with real life events loosely. All right, to show you a little bit of the combat, you have a little bar and you want to try to get in the red marks because then they're like critical hits. Oh, this guy is Im immune to physical, but it's for all the uh, abilities. I forget her attack one, is it? This is one of her magics. See the magic, it does have a crit, but only in one spot. I'll just show you a little idea of how the game goes. That wheel mechanic is also prevalent in different like interactions throughout the game, like having to like turn a wheel or something to do something. It'll have you see if it successfully does it. And they change it up a little bit in the second game, but it's still wheel based, but you have a little bit more customization on it. Let's do his ultimate. Perfect. See, we got a crit. It also has to do, uh, you have to do that on your healing abilities and items as well. So it's adds a little stress, but it does keep you on your toes and keep you engaged in the game. And that is part of the reason I think it should be included in the top list. I think it definitely should be on the list of must play games. They're not cheap, but it could be worse. Thanks for checking it out. The games I want to recommend for this video are the Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance games. There's, you know, an original and a sequel to it, as well as the Champions of Norath and its sequel, Champions Return to Arms. Now, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance is set in the Dungeons and Dragons universe. You know, there's quite a few Baldur's Gate games at this point. And then the Champions of Norath game is actually set in the EverQuest universe. And Champions of Norath is more of a first party Sony tile, title, whereas Dark Alliance is developed by Snowblind Studios, but they share the same engine. And the engine is so incredibly good 
for this console. It is mind-boggling. They have such great particle effects for the fire, for the water that moves around as you walk beneath it, for the shadows and the lighting. It, it, it just builds such a great ambiance. They have super sampled graphics, which make it look a lot higher resolution than it actually is. The soundscapes, the soundtracks are just absolutely immersive as can be. The only real downside with the engine is a lot of the vocals tend to be way over compressed and even recent PC ports of Dark, Dark Alliance don't seem to fix that. But these games, if you like Diablo-like games, dungeon crawlers, isometric games, these are absolutely top tier and I would continue buying new games made in this engine today if that were an option. Now you also have more of the classic isometric dungeon crawler games like the Gauntlet series available as well and those are also great. PlayStation 2 has a treasure trove of survival horror titles, but one of the most notable ones is Fatal Frame, which in 2002 spawned a cult classic yet very prolific series. Fatal Frame follows the story of Miku, who is looking for her missing brother Mafuyu, who disappeared while attempting to find the whereabouts of others who have also disappeared in an abandoned Japanese mansion called Himuro Manor. While investigating, you encounter ghosts, which you fight by taking their picture using a special camera known as the Camera Obscura. Waiting out your shots and hitting ghosts right when they're about to attack will allow you to do more damage, hard stun them, and also gain more points for camera upgrades and abilities. The enemy ghosts in this game are very tricky, hiding in walls and often teleporting everywhere, so you have to train yourself to be a very good shot and learn their patterns to be able to survive to the next sets of areas to unlock as the game goes on. Some glitches exist when playing on PCSX2, like some ghosts never making themselves visible or flickering, for which temporary fixes exist to resolve if you are looking on the PCSX2 wiki. An input lag might make some of the frame-perfect shots you have to do to cause damage really difficult. Otherwise, one could run the game at a solid 4K60, as the game's animations are all keyed for 60 frames per second, barring some 2D texture bugs here and there. The game looks and plays amazingly, and the whole series is fantastic to play through for anyone willing to do a deep dive. One game that stands out to me for the PlayStation 2 is Shadow of the Colossus. And it's funny because I was a late bloomer to Shadow of the Colossus. I remember seeing it in magazines. I remember seeing it on store shelves. Looking at the back of the box, it didn't look that interesting to me. It's not my kind of game. It wasn't until this tells you how long ago it was. It was the manager of Game Crazy. I happened to be at Game Crazy. And the manager said, oh, dude, have you checked out Shadow of the Colossus yet? And I hadn't. So he literally took it from the store shelf, put it into the game system to play on the consoles, like the, the TVs that they had in the thing. Gave me the controller, he kind of told me where to go. It's like, okay, well, you know, go over here, climb up this, do that. And at first I'm like thinking, okay, I've, I've played games like this. You know, I've played games like this. Until you first see the Colossus come into frame with the giant footsteps, and you see how big he is compared to how you know little you are in comparison. And you have to climb up, like, climb up and everything like that. You gotta hold out of that grip button and um, you know find out where his uh, weak spots are. I was drawn in, I was suckered in. Uh, ended up buying the game then and there, and it's the game I bought for PlayStation 2, bought the Greatest Hits version, I bought it for PlayStation 3, I bought it for PlayStation 4. Inevitably, if it comes out, I'll get it for PlayStation 5. Inevitably, if it comes out, I hope it does, I'll get it for the PlayStation VR 2. It's all, to me, uh, what I think of PlayStation 2. Uh, all the other games I've played, all the, all the time I've spent playing all these other great games, whenever I think of PlayStation 2, I always think of Shadow of the Colossus, and... Man, it's, it's, it still blows my mind today. I, it's, it's literally my, it's literally my wallpaper on my computer. We'll have more PS2 content coming soon. As, as I mentioned, it is my favorite console with my biggest collection, and it's just a system I can never put down or let go of. I appreciate you watching. Be sure to comment with what your favorite PS2 game is, or one that is like a hidden gem that some of us should check out in the comment section down below. Check out all the creators that submitted for this video linked below, and remember, be kind, rewind.